Broadcasting live from SETI Alpha 6 in the Andromeda Galaxy, this is Mr. C. And happy Aloha Tuesday to you. So, and why would that be? Because you are just a mere number of hours away from the start of fall break. Woohoo! Now, I know you've already got all this stuff all ready before the video was turned on. You got your two white sheets because you're going to have a quiz. You've numbered to 10 already, which is fantastic. So, and a reminder no homework over the next few days. That's probably all right with you, right? I mean, I can always stick it, you know, there at the end. Going to add on, do an add on right at the end. Anyway, I suspect you're ah, on that for homework. My prayers for you that you'll be able to recharge your batteries to relax, de stress, catch up on your sleep, all of that. Hey, I hope you liked the shuttle launch video that you saw. It takes a big force to get that shuttle and those rockets and all that fuel going 17,500 miles an hour. That would be orbital speed. How much does all of that weigh? 4.4 million pounds. So my goodness, the force has to be tremendous. And it gets going nine times faster than the average rifle bullet. You're kidding. No. That's how fast the shuttle ends up going um, as it catches up with and docks with the International Space Station when it used to go up. So anyway, it's not going up anymore, unfortunately. I wish I could have seen a shuttle launch in person. 15, 20 years ago, there was a chance that I was going to get to see a shuttle launch, but it didn't happen, didn't materialize. I, I, I so wanted to see one. Just to see the power of that you saw in that video. I love that video. Um, anyway, hey, and just a note on the Apollo 11 video that I showed you where the astronauts were coming down to the surface of the moon. Did you really understand how scary that descent was? They were trying to miss boulders, because if you land on a boulder and tip over, you ain't going home. You're going to die right there on the surface of the moon. So they had to come straight down. And they were missing craters. They were flying over craters because they didn't quite um, come down on their uh, planned spot. So that was a really tense four or five minutes that you saw. And they nearly didn't get to land on the moon. They were just under 30 seconds of fuel left on their um, rockets. Their um, rockets that are, that are actually firing reverse rockets, that's what I'm thinking of, that would slow them down. They had under 30 seconds of fuel left, or they would have had to abort the landing and go back up to the mothership. So it was a big deal. And then Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong would not have been the first two astronauts to walk on the surface of the moon. But they ended up getting that wonderful honor. I love that video. Now, I've got a little video for you today, too, from the moon that I think you're going to like. But first, we have a quiz to take and a grade on Isaac Newton. So you've numbered to 10. I'll go slowly. So number one, what country was Isaac Newton from? Multiple choice. U.S., United States, U.K., United Kingdom, or Italy. So where was he from, Isaac Newton? The U.S., the U.K., or Italy. How are we supposed to know this? I told you. I think the video mentioned it as well. That's number one. Number two, give one of his inventions. I mentioned one. 
be as specific as you can. One of his inventions. It's not the microscope. Lay one hook, then lay one hook. Robert Hook. So what did Newton come up with? Three, he was one of the greatest scientists who ever lived, maybe the greatest ever. By the way, he was a God believer. He absolutely believed there was, there was a God who had created everything. He might have been born again, I'm not sure exactly. But anyway, he was looking with his science and his brilliant brain, he was looking for specific evidences of the building blocks that God made everything out of. So just an amazing scientist. Okay, now, he was the first scientist to use something in his science. And because of it, he was able to discover a lot of things. It's a two-word answer. What was it? I've made a big deal about it in class. Several, six weeks ago maybe. So two-word answer. What did he use that really helped him come up with his discoveries? And number four. He came up with many scientific mm, and these are principles that you can always count on. That's number four. Scientific principles that you can always count on. They just always happen. So wouldn't just be a hypothesis. So not hypothesis. And number five. He came up with a principle that said objects that are moving will continue in motion. And he described two ways they would continue to move. What did he say? That's number five. They moving objects would continue to move. How would they continue to move? That's number five. Two word answer. Number six, he came up with a principle that said that every object in the universe finish it. Number six. Every object in the universe. What? Number six. Number seven. Now I'll go back over these. Number seven. He said an object that's not moving, he called it at rest. It's at rest, not moving. So a non-moving object um, said this, it would continue to not move unless, so finish that. An object not moving will continue not to move unless, finish that several word answer, huh? So number seven. Number eight, he also came up with a principle that said for every action, finish it, there is, and I'll, I'll help you out a little bit, there is a mm and an mm reaction. And you've got to give me the two descriptions of the reaction. For every action, the balloon I used, right, yesterday, action, reaction. Number nine, give an invention that uses the action-reaction principle. Give me one invention where there's a push that way and it causes a reaction that way. Action-reaction. Give me an action-reaction machine, please, in number nine. I might have to roll my eyes if you miss that. Have you ever been on an action reaction machine? Oh yeah, yeah. Have you, Mr. C? Oh yeah. And then number 10, what do we call a push or a pull in science? What's the name of it? One word answer, a push or a pull. Okay, here are the repeats really quick. So double check, Mr. Gilbert will stop at the end of the quiz and let you, if you've still got to come up with an, a question, he'll help. Okay, 
So, and I thank him for paying attention right now. So, number one, what country was Isaac Newton from? The U.S., the U.K., or Italy? Number one. Number two, one invention that Isaac Newton came up with. One invention. Three, he was one of the greatest scientists who ever lived. One of the reasons was to come up with his discoveries, he used a two-word answer in number three. I taught it to you about six weeks ago, like I said. So, and then number four, he came up with principles that you could always count on. One word answer for a principle in science that you can always count on. It's number four. Number five, one of the principles he came up with, he said um, an object that's moving would continue to move, and he described two ways how it would continue to move. Number five. So a moving object would continue to move. How? What would its path be like? It's number five. Number six, he came up with another principle that said every object in the universe, and what about it? Finish it. It's a several word answer. It's number six. Number seven, he said an object that's not moving or at rest would continue to not move unless, unless what? Number seven. Number eight, another principle of his was, for every action, there's an mm and an mm reaction. So what descriptors did he use? Adjectives, right? Adjectives, descriptors, for the kind of reaction. Action, reaction, what kind? And then number nine, an invention that uses the action-reaction principle. You've been on one before. You're welcome. Early Merry Christmas present. And number 10, what do we call a push or a pull in science? All right, I'll let Mr. Gilbert come in just for a minute. If there's any catching up you need to do before we grade this with a red pen that you've already got out. And I'm back, and here are your answers. Now, be honest. No other pens or pencils out. You've already stowed the pen or pencil you wrote with. You've just got the red pen out. You've initialed down below. I've talked to you about being honest. I gave you the little talk about, you know, how sad it makes God when we cheat or when we lie. So here is an honesty opportunity for you. So, Mr. Gilbert's going to wander around the room during this time. All right, number one, what country was Newton from? The UK, England, UK, United Kingdom. And then number two, one invention he came up with. Well, I told you he came up with a telescope. And if you really got picky, it was a reflecting telescope, like the one over by the chart in the back of the room, the human body chart. Reflector telescopes, got a mirror down the bottom of it. Number three, one of the greatest scientists ever, and one of the reasons was, for a lot of his discoveries, he used the scientific method. Number three, scientific method. That's it, got to have scientific method. Number four, he came up with science principles you could always count on. We call those laws. And <laughs> other questions I ask you are about laws, scientific laws. His laws, actually. Number five, um, he said that, and this was his first law of motion, an object that's moving, motion, would uh, keep moving how? In a straight line at the same speed, unless it was acted upon by a force, like air, that would slow it down, or any other force. So straight line, same speed, same direction, same speed. Number six, his universal law of gravitation said every object in the universe pulls or attracts every other object. You had to have the whole enchilada there, whole thing. 
Okay? Don't give yourself credit for it if you didn't have it. Always, as always, if you have a question, put a question mark. Okay, number seven, an object that's not moving, an at rest object, will continue um, to not move unless it's acted upon by a force. Unless it's acted upon by a force. That was number seven. Number eight, his uh, third law of motion for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Half each for those, equal, opposite reaction. An invention that uses the equal opposite law, third law of motion, a rocket, an airplane, a jet. So a jet, action that way, reaction that way, the hot exhaust that way, pushes a plane that way. So put a question mark by it if you've got something else. And then number 10, a push or pull is a force. A force, push or pull. Okay, the number you missed at the top, be honest. Number right over 10, please. Perfect, 10 out of 10, right? Okay, make sure your name date period is on that upper right hand corner. Pass that into the center, please. Okay. Just a little bit more, I've got another little video that I want you to see, and it's about astronauts skipping on the moon. It wasn't Apollo 11, it was a subsequent Apollo mission. You know, the moon has one six gravity, right? So, oh, and notice in the video, uh, moon videos, notice the black sky. Reason, no atmosphere to filter the light like on Earth. So that's why we get our blue sky. And here's a JROP. I should have done more of these. On your other white sheet that you've got, I'd like you to put your answer. What do you think the Apollo spacesuits weigh on Earth? They only weigh one-sixth that on the moon. But what do they weigh on Earth, do you think? They're not light. So write down your exact guess. Whoever is the closest in class, it's worth a Jolly Rancher, a J-Rop, Jolly Rancher opportunity. So Mr. Gilbert will come through for you at the end of the period. He'll do the handling of all of that because he's got clean hands. Here it is, 200 pounds. 200 pounds. They're heavy. By the way, if they got a tear in their suit all the way through, they're goners. They're going to heaven. That would have been catastrophic. And I think in this video that you're going to see, one of the astronauts falls down. He had fallen down on a rock, sharp rock, and tore his suit open. Woo! I'll bet people in Houston, the astronauts in Houston, when they saw that, I'll bet they went, oh, is he okay? Whew. Thank you, Lord. I bet some of them said, thank you, Lord. And it was a thank you, Lord. Okay, this video you're going to see, three-minute video, skipping on the moon. I think the astronauts do a little singing. So anyway, I was strolling in the park one day. I think they're singing in the merry month of, it was actually December. So anyway, enjoy the video. I think you will. So, and then have a great fall break. Um, just be careful. Blessings on you, praying for you. And you pray for me, you be praying for me. Again, happy Aloha Tuesday, and I'll see you next Monday, but I hope it goes by slowly. So do you.